so crazy. Saw <laughs> so Balboa Park, and I'm gonna go do a number of the museums here. And so I stopped first at the one that's labeled Federal Building, and I noticed walking up to it that San Diego Hall of Champions Sports Museum used to be here. But those letters have been torn down. Seems like a slightly extreme reaction to the Chargers moving to Los Angeles. But to each his own. In the modern era, where jets and space vehicles sit side by side, the greatest achievements by brilliant men and women from the aviation and space community. You'll also see the only GPS satellite on exhibit anywhere in the world. A technology we take for granted every day. And don't miss the museum's 3D, 4D theater and flight simulators, where you'll experience firsthand the thrill of flight. Enjoy your visit to the San Diego Air and Space Museum. And please, come back soon. Spooky. Right, brothers. Early flying machines. That's what GPS positioning satellite looks like. Those are solar panels and power it. It may or may not have an internal nuclear power supply. So. I'm going to give this one to the James Bond people. What if every GPS uh, positioning satellite had carried a nuclear payload that, if chain reacted, would be enough to destroy the planet? What if somebody was able to link up all the GPS satellites and send all their cores into simultaneous meltdown? I really doubt the nuclear payload is that significant, but it's a fun fiction idea. Terrifying. Space, our greatest adventure. on my space. Those are new. There's Pluto. Those three I've never heard of. Good thing I'm not in sixth grade because I would tell the teacher that there are 13 planets in our solar system, including the four dwarfs I had never heard of. And here's the Milky Way. We are in the Orion Spur of the Perseus Arm. That's how small we are. All those other arms are just our galaxy. The audio is terrible in this room, but uh, I just wanted to get the, we choose to do these things not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Ten years ago, under this standard, man emerged 
So there are all these cool timelines around here and uh, little trivia questions and things and I came to this one. And I really want the answer to be Master Blaster owns the moon. Master Blaster owns the moon. No one owns the moon. Master Blaster owns the moon. This is an actual Mercury capsule. There's no chance in hell I'm going to get in that thing. No way. No way. I, I get claustrophobic looking at that open-sided thing. Yeah, I'll go to space when they have like a convertible that my head can stick out of. This might be as close as I have been to an Emmy. It's in Wally Shira's gear. There's nothing labeling what it was actually for. I feel dumb that I don't know. Maybe it was like ballast on a space capsule or something. I dig these timelines. There's one of American. Uh, this, well, this one, the other one, the other ones led up to the '70s. So this one starts in '73. It was modern space travel, space exploration. But there was one for history, starting BCE, going all the way up to the 20th century, and there was one for 20th century pre-1973. Last space shuttle was in 2011. Crazy. Oh, it's escaping me with the name of the company an alien is. Waitani. Shoot. I'll have to turn in some nerd cred for that one. There's another word to it. It's Waitani something. So I saw this question and I assumed it was a dead men tell no tales kind of thing. Seared steak and hot metal. Space smells like seared steak and hot metal. Space smells like an outback. One of the weirdest things that have been sent to space? Rocks from Mount Everest, a Buzz Lightyear toy, a Pizza Hut pizza, an Olympic torch, 18 pregnant mice, 130 water snails, 1,500 crickets. Now, leaving aside the obvious uh, Domino's 30 minutes or less joke, 18 pregnant mice. 18 pregnant mice went to space. How many came back? How many came back? Can an astronaut bring anything up into space with them? Anything as long as it weighs 3.3 .3 pounds or less.
I'm thinking of things that weigh 3.3 pounds or less, and I'm not going to discuss them on camera. Legos and books. Legos and books. The video game exhibit is the most popular. Some days it feels like all I've got are dad jokes. Okay, most days it feels like all I've got are dad jokes. How are Falcons influencing the future of space exploration? Same way the Patriots and the Jets are influencing the future of space exploration. Maybe a little slower though. Sorry, Atlanta. Which planet is inhabited solely by robots? Mars. That we know of. Why would it be cool to play basketball on Mars? Why wouldn't it be cool to play basketball on Mars? Are there really any little green men? Feels like any answer I gave to this would be punching down. World War One exhibit, Flying Ace. So this is a hurricane simulator. I just watched an attendant test it. Apparently it paid two dollars and you step inside and it gives you wind up to, it was just shy of 80 miles an hour, 78 miles an hour, and I'm still trying to wrap my head around it. You pay $2 to experience something that you would drive really, really fast to avoid. I mean, if I pay $2 now, then when I'm in Florida, I'm still going to try to avoid a hurricane. I think I'm going to save that $2. I'm good with that. I know what wind is. I can drive 80 miles an hour and roll my window down. I'm good. I think I'm good. That's it. Cool space, right? So I'm in Balboa Park, uh, San Diego, where they have a ton of museums. I bought a day pass, uh, which lets me explore five of them. Um, I've already done the Air and Space Museum, um, so I've got four more to go. And I spent two hours in the Air and Space Museum and blew 50% of my battery. Uh, Um, so I've got to, got to be a little more judicious about my battery. Um, so I don't know, might take pictures, might uh, do smaller sets and take less of the content to the museum. But I'm glad I got here early because this place is like packed now. So I'm going to head back in. I have about four hours to do the other four museums I paid for, plus any of the free museums I want to see. Um, very cool place, however, and there's a bunch of theater spaces, and uh, yeah, the, the map of stuff in the area is something I took a picture of, so that will be part of the poster available, so you can see just how much stuff there is to do in Balboa Park. Um, Old Globe Theater is here. Uh, among other things. So cool. Too soon. Second so stop, San Diego Art Institute.
San Diego Art Institute. Serpent River Book. It's hard to tell which is the front cover and which is the back. That one looks like, oh, that's the full cover. That's front and back. The entire book folds out of it. Poems, pictures, artwork. Not page by page, but unfolding. Also makes me wonder if there is a point where it's flipped over and the back side is displayed. I'm really curious about this piece. Makes me want to get the book itself. And here's the exponent, here's the information, that's sideways to you, sorry. I like to read the installation information after I've looked at the piece so that it doesn't determine my perception. So I'll give this a read and hopefully it'll answer some of my questions and we'll see. I really like this one. I don't know if the lighting's intentional. I'm assuming it must be. I mean, there's lamps in the ceiling that aren't on, so must be. Anybody else feel like that sometimes? I know you do. This is an interactive piece. I took pictures of the documents. There's got to be an official name for that, and I feel stupid that I don't know it. But this one's about burying your fear leaving it behind, touch those, look at the rocks, you can write your own piece, and add it to the wall, bury your fear, let the past die, kill it if you have to. Sounds ominous, it's a quote from The Last Jedi. And on the other side is this one, which you are allowed to color in. I dig that. That's very cool. So I'm at Balboa Park, that's the San Diego Museum of Art behind me. I have about two, two and a half hours left before the park closes because this is Sunday. I've done two art museums, that's a good four that I still want to see. I'm probably going to have to speed up a little bit. Um, I've already seen the Air and Space Museum, 
and one of the art institutes. I have not been in there yet. going to do that now. Uh, then the photography museum, uh, the Japanese Friendship Garden. He's dancing over there. Um, yeah, so I got to move a little quicker because I only have two hours left. Bubba Park. Let's go left this time. Uh, I'm going to pick up any of the bubbles that are being blown. Still Bubba Park. About to do museum number four. Fleet Science Center, Space and Science Center. Nice. Okay, this is a little bit creepy. See the two upside down faces? This may not work on video, it might just be normal. See, they're different. Apparently they really want you to simulate a hurricane while you're here at some point. Fleet Science Museum has a hurricane simulator, so it's here in space. I don't want to be in a hurricane. This is foreshadowing, by the way. It's all yours, Beavis. It's all yours. I saved this one for last because I thought it was going to be the most peaceful.
So I'm finding my way back to the car after getting out of the uh, Japanese garden. I think bad audio is just going to be a running gag and I'll go back in and ADR the whole thing if it's important. This is somebody's car, I think. I don't think he even thinks it's an event here. I'm going to go this way. I'm going down the hill to my car. So, my big takeaway today, this is Sunday. And I haven't been concerned with the day of the week. So, it didn't occur to me that there would be huge crowds here on a weekend. I know, it's silly. Sometimes I don't think about things like that. Um, so I think my takeaway here is do the touristy things during the week and then on the weekend either rest up or catch show. There are a lot of movies I'm going to want to see. I think I'm still trying to find time to see us and I probably should have done that today. And then come to Balboa Park tomorrow. I want to ask a staff member what the difference is in traffic but I found a shortcut out so I'm uh, making use of it. I don't want to show you the traffic waiting to leave this parking lot. This is not the parking lot I'm parked in, but I'm afraid mine might be worse because mine was as close to the entrance as I could park, not realizing how prescient that would be. I hope I pronounced that right. So anyway, take a look at the traffic waiting to leave. Uh, touristy weekend stuff. Woo. I forgot uh, to mention the thing that made me want to take the video in the first place. I'm going to do this one from the other side so the lighting is better, smart guy. Um, while I was in the garden, there was a picture I wanted to take that I couldn't take. Um, so I, I stopped and pointed it out. There was a guy posing for a picture in one of the flower beds, and they weren't expediting the picture really they were just standing around taking their time and the woman taking the picture was standing over the sign literally standing over the sign that said please be respectful stay on the walkways i wanted that picture so bad so bad so there's the exit that's president's way there's a light over there there's the traffic up there is where I came from, where I was walking when you saw the last video. This is the entrance to the parking lot I'm in. So this is the line of people waiting it out. There's my car. There's the rest of the lot. Oh, really plane? Really airplane? So this is a testament to my own foolishness of doing touristic things on a weekend. So I'm going to chill here in Balboa Park for a while, wait for uh, traffic to clear a little bit before I try and get out. I'm not expected anywhere for a while, so hope you're having a good weekend, everybody. And, and by everybody, I mean me, I guess.